the family that prays together stays together. Welcome to today's doctrinal reflection on what does it mean to believe in one church as a family. My name is Emery and Douglas Wafula from the Catholic Diocese of Bungoma in St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary, Nairobi. To define one in essence, it means having undivided parts, an individual whole, the entirety, a thing which might have several parts, but it's connected to one body. The Catholic Church has four marks, one, holy, apostolic, and Catholic. In their profession of faith, which is the Nicene Creed, adopted in the year 325 in the Council of Nicaea, and amended in the year 381 in the Constantinople Council, articulates the four marks clearly to strengthen the belief, stating that its source is God the Father, founder is Christ, and the Holy Spirit is its soul. Remember, when you talk about marks, these are not descriptions of the church. Rather, they are attributes according to the Catholic, uh, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 811. These four characteristics are inseparable. They are linked to each other, which means one characteristic cannot stand on its own. Hence, they are essential features of the church and her mission. Let us today dwell on the oneness of the church, in this case, which firstly is seen in us, the community of believers, a unified community, a family to be specific, whereby we are united in the belief. That one is well articulated in the Apostles' Creed. We are united in the purpose. We are united in the goals as a church. We are united in visions. What brings us together, furthermore, is the unity in the seven sacraments which we celebrate in the, across the Catholic Church. The apostolic deposit of faith and the universal leadership of the papacy in Rome, we are all subscribed to it. The Catholic Church is divided into two main rites. We have the Western Rite, in which we are, that's the Latin Rite. Then we have the Eastern Rite, churches, which include, just to give an example so I mentioned, the Alexandrian Rite, the Antiochian Rite, the Byzantine Rite, Chaldean Rite, Armenian Rite, the Ambrosian Rite. These ones are just examples. But as a tree that has several branches, but it is united on one stem, that all these churches, we are united to one papacy. That is the unity of the church. Analogically speaking, to give an example, look at the nature of a football team that club which you like most. It has 11 players, yes. Each player has a specific role to play. But the unity of these players will give the unity or the winning of this team or the purpose of this team, which is to win. This one can also be related to, in relation to this unity, let's look at our families. We are talented differently. Each one of us has different talents in the family. But it doesn't mean that these talents should separate us. The talents are meant to bring us together as a family so that wherever somebody fails, one can come and help. Today, dear brothers and sisters, it is realized that if one player misses to play their role well, we shall lose. If one misses to do their duty well, we shall lose. This one can also relate to the relationship between the clergy and the laity. The clergy in the church, they have their specific role. They are the ministers of the sacraments. The laity are the believers. Each has their own role. So it means that if the laity will fail to perform their duties, then the church will not be united and we shall fail in our faith. If the clergy will not do their duties, then the unity will be eroded. So the unity is also seen in the church in that particular way. This one can also be articulated well when it comes to Christ's prayer, his priestly prayer. This one can be found in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 21. He says that, may all be one, as you, Father, are in me. The unity between the Son and the Father, whom he has sent to the world for salvation of the souls. Dear brothers and sisters, in the history of religion, the church has been institute, has been one as instituted by Christ himself. The Gospel of Matthew tells us in 16:18. When Christ is talking to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. 
This one has seen the Catholic Church stay for over 600 years before the coming of other religions, just to give a mention of the Muslim, which began in the year 1610, around the year 1610. Then the Protestant churches, they appeared in the year 1517. But prior to that, the church was one, just as it's articulated in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, that all the believers were of one heart and one soul and one mind. The church has kept this unity for over 2,000 years, dear brothers and sisters, and we can emulate this even in our own lives. Unity in our families can also be fostered in a simple way. St. Paul, as he writes to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, he talks about relationship in the family. Children obey their parents. Fathers don't provoke your children. That one you can read and you can understand more. It will tell you that everybody in the family has their roles to play, to, to play. And today, without unity, dear brothers and sisters, we are bound to fall. Look at what Christ tells us in Mark chapter 3, verse 25, that a house divided among itself, it cannot stand. And unity grows along the way. It never stands still. Unity happens when we walk together, thanks to the Pope Francis' initiative on synod and synodality, walking together. Walking together, brothers and sisters, will make us go far. How good and pleasant is it when brothers live together in unity? That is Psalm number 133, verse 1. Truly, the family that prays together stays together, and the world at prayer will forever be a world at peace. Thank you.